Well, good morning. Gabriel Varga here. And as we read together through the Bible in the year, uh, we have um, number 16 today. Um, um, what a chapter. People falling into hell with the earth opening. What do you mean falling into hell? Hell's in the center of the earth. You read the Bible and believe the Bible, you believe that. I mean, you know, you ever seen the volcanoes spitting up all that fire and brimstone? That's hell. Well, let's go into it and see the circumstances here. Numbers chapter 16, King James Bible, which is the Bible. Now, Korah, the son of Izhar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abram, the sons of Eliab and On, the son of Peleth, the sons of Reuben, took men. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation of men of renown. You know, the big problem we have today in Christian organizations, uh, we put a bunch of worldly uh, famous men on the boards Maybe they're Christians, maybe they're not. Probably a mix. And, and we put people as deacons in the churches, uh, men of renown, famous men, the big shots, the high rollers. We put them uh, uh, in as the deacons of the church, and they generally uh, run the preacher and hire them and fire them as they feel. That they don't get a man of God to lead the church. But it's been the same, same in Moses' day as it is today. Nothing changes. Nothing new under the sun, you know that? And it says, famous in the congregation, men of renown, and they gather themselves together. You see, there's always unity. When, when, when I find when people jump on me about Christianity, there's usually a group of them, a small group or a larger group. But it's been the same since Moses. And they gather themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. And son of them, ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore, then, lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. Now, see, one of the biggest problems in Christianity is rebellion against leadership. God uses leaders. You mark it down. I can say to you, and not with bragging or, or uh, follow me as I follow Christ. If anything I say you can't find in the Bible, if I'm teaching you truth, and uh, go do, uh, first of all, come prove it to me in the Bible. People always tell me what the Bible says. That they, they don't even read the Bible. They, they don't know nothing about it. They can't prove it by the Bible or stand by it. But uh, usually rebellious people come out against God. Now, God uses leaders. I, I know many people say, I just report to God. That so, so, sounds so spiritual and pious. It's a bunch of baloney. God uses leaders. Maybe maybe he'll use you as a leader. He could. He might. He may. But you've got to have leadership in Christianity. You've got to have leadership in the family. Who's the leader in the family? The husband. You've got to have leadership in the church. Who's the leader in the church? The pastor. And on and on and on. So, and they gather themselves together against Moses, against Aaron. You take too much upon yourselves. I'm told that often, and it's been since Moses' day. When Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. Now, see, Moses was a very humble man, the meekest of all men. I'm not as humble as I try to work on it, and probably says, Oh, you missed the mark, Pastor. You might have tried it, but you sure missed it. Probably have, but I'm working on it. Godly men are humble men. And I, I, I say that uh, not being a Moses. I say it as uh, understanding how God works. He uses leaders that are humble. He fell on his face and he spake unto Korah and unto all his company, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will show who, who are his and who are holy. Wow, now this was a test here. And will cause him to come near unto him, even him whom he hath chosen will he cause to come near unto him. So God chose certain people to lead and, and to get his word out. This do, take ye censers, Korah, and all his company, and put fire therein, and put incense in them before the Lord tomorrow, and it shall be 
that the man whom the Lord doth chose, he shall be holy and take too much upon you, ye sons of Levi. So here, God told Moses, let's put him to the test. And Moses said unto Korah, Here, I pray you, ye sons of Levi, seem, seemeth it but a small thing unto you that the God of Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself. God wants to lead us to be near to, to him, to God himself, to do the service of the tabernacle of, of the Lord, these Levites, and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them. And he hath brought thee here to me and to all the brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee, and seek ye the priesthood. See, they, 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 weren't, they were Levites. They weren't priests. But they wanted to, they wanted to take over uh, the priest's job. They wanted to take over Moses' job. They didn't, didn't respect them. For which cause both you and all thy company are gathered together against the Lord. So when they were against Moses, they were against the Lord. And what and what is Aaron that ye murmur against him? He's a priest. You know. And Moses sent to call Dathan and Abram, the sons of Eliab, which said, We will not come up. So rebels. Don't come. I won't, I won't come to church. Don't talk to me. I don't want to hear that. I've heard that before. I know that. Everybody knows that. Yeah. Just go on in your worldliness. See where it ends. We will not come up. Is it a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of the land that floweth with milk and honey? They're talking about coming up out of Egypt. Egypt was a land flowing with milk and honey? <laughs> Are you kidding me? They could have went into the land of milk and honey, but but they wouldn't. We had two godly men, Joshua and Caleb, and we had ten ungodly men. That's what you get from boards, boards of directors. They had a board of directors. <laughs> they read the minutes. They waste the hours. Yeah. They, uh, they're, they're insignificant. And as most boards do, deacon boards and other boards, uh, they voted 10 against 2 to not go forward. <laughs> two godly men, 10 worldly men. That's what it is. The land that, so they took them out of Egypt. They were, their minds were so twisted, they thought the world was good. Egypt. Milk and honey. To kill us in the wilderness. Well, first of all, he wasn't killing them. He was feeding them and taking care of them. And a generation was going to die because of their wickedness except thou make thyself altogether prince over us so Moses was God's man they accused him of being the dictator and he didn't want to follow him moreover thou hast not brought us into the land that floweth with milk and honey uh, they're the ones kept herself out of the land that floweth with milk and honey what did they do they voted 10 to 2 and the people uh, stuck with the 10 and they decided not to go until the end when they thought, oh, yeah, well, when Moses says it, you know, brought, brought the judgment of God on him, he says, okay, we're going to go. And Moses, don't go now. <laughs> you can't go now. God's not with you. And, of course, they tried to go, and they got beat back. Only, the only ones that went over were Joshua and Caleb, not even Moses. Hit a rock instead of talking to it and kept him out of it. But do what God tells you. Moses kept out of promise, promised land because he, 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 uh, he hit a rock instead of speaking to the rock. Well, give us an inheritance, our fields and vineyards. Will thou put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. Rebellion, rebellion. And Moses was very wroth. You know, there is righteous indignation. Moses was a, a meek man, but there's a time for God's man to get mad about sin. And Moses was wroth and said unto the Lord God, that's the Lord God, Respect not thou their offering. I have not taken one ass from them, neither have I hurt one of them. And Moses said unto Korah, Be thou and all thy company before the Lord, thou and thy, thy and Aaron, tomorrow. And take every man his censer and put 
incense in them and bring ye before the Lord every man his censer 250 censers these are these big shot men these these businessmen these know-it-alls money makers and, and uh, rulers uh, to rule over God and Aaron each of you his censer so then Aaron and, and, and God's people are going to you know, bring the fire you got strange fire or you got holy fire what do you got and he took every man his censer and put fire in them and laid the incense thereupon and stood at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them into the... See, see, there's always opposition to God's men and God. Always. Gathered all the congregation, these 250 and others, they were the leaders, against them into the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. The glory of God appeared unto all the congregation. That God appeared. There's no phony God. This is the God, the one and only, Jehovah. Amen. And the Lord spake unto Moses and said unto Aaron, God's men, separate yourselves from among the congregation that I may consume them in a moment. Here's the judgment of God. You know, people all the time, that people told me today already, God is good. God is love. God is judgment too. Like I, like I told these folks today, there's two sides of the corn. Uh, there's a grace, there's a mercy, the other side is judgment, wrath, and hell. Two sides of the coin. Sad to say, most are on the wrong side of it, going to hell. And they fell upon their faces and said, O God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, and wilt uh, thou be wroth with all the congregation? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get ye up from about the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abram, it's wicked people, false teachers, rebellious, proud people. And Moses rose up and went into Dathan and Abram, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men. And you say, Don't call people wicked. That's what Moses called them. That's what God told them they were. It says, And, 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 uh, and he spake to the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men and touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all their sins. So they got up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abram on every side, and Dathan and Abram came out and stood in the door of their tents and their wives and their sons and their little children. I wish mom or some of the kids would have run over with the other crowd. I mean, they chose some, someone. Someone told me this morning, why did he destroy their families? Because they were wicked. And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works. Okay. God says, here's, here's the test. Here's the test. For I have not done them of mine own mind. If these men die the common death, if they have a usual death and die of old age, uh, and if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me. He says, uh, if they just live a regular life, and, and then God hasn't sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open up her mouth, <laughs> and swallow them up with all that appaineth unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. See, so you get, you get, get uh, God man, and, and you rebel against God, you speak against God, you go to hell. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up and their houses and all the men that pertained to come to Korah and all their goods, even took their stuff down to hell with them. They and all that appertained, he said it two times, to them that went down alive into the pit. And the earth closed upon them. And they perished from among the congregation. And all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them. For they said, Least the earth swallow us up also. See, the fear of God comes to us. They've seen it. You know, see, sometimes God got to make an example of wicked people so that others would fear God and, and turn from wickedness and rebellion against him. And there came out a fire from the Lord and consumed the 250 men that offered the incense. Oh, my God. These learned men, high, big shots, rich people. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, 
that he take up the censers out of the burning and scatter uh, thou the fire yonder for they are hollowed the censers of these sinners against their own souls let them make them broad plates for covering of the altar for they offered them before the Lord therefore they are hollowed and they shall be a sign unto the children of Israel and Eleazar the priest took the brazen censers wherewith they were burnt uh, had offered and they were made uh, broad plates for a covering of the altar to be a memorial unto the children of Israel that no stranger which is not of the seed of Aaron came near to offer incense before the Lord that he be not as Korah fallen into hell and his company as the Lord said to him by the hand of Moses but on the morrow all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron saying you have killed the people of the can you imagine after they've showed this wicked people falling into hell the people still rebelled and said you killed the people of God well it was just very clear that God had killed these people and swallowed them up into hell and yet the rebellious multitudes as there are today will rebel against God spend eternity in the fires of hell you don't have to be that kind I've surrendered to God I surrender all I surrender all all to be my blessed Savior I surrender all yeah I'm not a rebel I'm not a rebel all have sinned and come short of the glory of God but, but we, if we confess our sins he'll forgive us yeah Confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart. It's God who raised him from the dead. The word of God tells us that. That's God's word. And we can be saved through the blood of Christ. Yeah. Moses and Aaron came before the tabernacle of the congregation. Verse 43. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Get thee up from among this congregation, that I may consume them as in a moment. And they fell upon their faces. Now he's going to wipe the whole bunch out. Now he, 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 he dropped a couple of families, two, three families into hell with all their stuff. Now he's going to wipe them all out. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a censer and fire, put fire upon the altar and put out the incense and go quickly into the congregation and make an atonement for them. Got to get their sins forgiven. Uh, and make an atonement for them. Uh, for there is wrath gone out from the Lord. The plague is begun. So God started the plague to kill them all. And Aaron took Moses' commanded and ran into the midst of the congregation. And behold, the plague was begun among the people. And he put on incense and made an atonement for the people. And he stood between the dead and the living. And the plague was stayed. He stood between the dead and the living. Ha, <laughs> that's Jesus Christ, my Savior. Stood between the dead and the living. Forgive my sins. I repented. I humbled myself. Have you? Have you? You better. You're going to fall into hell just like those did. Now they, now they that died in the plague were 14,700. Wow. Beside them that died in the matter of Korah, plus those that fell into hell, and all the others that died and went to hell. And Aaron returned unto Moses, unto the door of the tabernacle, and the plague was stayed. And the plague was stayed. Sins forgiven. Access to God. Heaven's door open. Jesus Christ. I'm saved. I'm God's man like Moses. You see, you compare yourself with Moses. <laughs> he was the meekest of all men. I'm not. I'm trying to work on it. But I'm a God's man and I preach the Bible. I preach this as just preaching you the Bible. Have been saved? Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the precious word of God. Live with and abide forever. The actual story of these families and all that pertaining to them falling into hell in the center of the earth. Sure is fire down there. I believe the Bible. Hell's in the center of the earth. Millions and millions and millions. Burning in the fires of hell. You shall also perish as they did who continue to, to rebel against God, against his preachers, against his word. Would you say today, 
Lord, I am a rebel. I've got a wicked heart. I'm a sinner. I can't save myself. No kind of works or church or baptism or confirmation or good works can save me, but only the blood of the precious Lamb of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, that was shed for the sins of the world and shed for me personally. I claim the blood upon me. I surrender. Believe in the death of Christ and shedding of his blood. His resurrection from the grave on the third day. I repent, Lord. I turn to you. And I receive you as my Savior. I will follow you. I will take your word and read it. And believe it. And do as I am commanded. Ask it all in the precious name of Jesus Christ and through his blood. Amen. Amen.